Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Welcome to another episode of my Battlefield series. That's where I show you how to put an, an entire battlefield together for your games of Warhammer 40,000. In this particular episode, it is featuring the Battlezone Frontiers from Games Workshop, the new Nakmond uh, campaign terrain. It's a superb set from Games Workshop. And then combining that with a number uh, of other uh, terrain features and battle mat as well. So in this video, what you see on the screen here, I will show you how to replicate that. Uh, so you can have this exact setup for your own games of 40k. So if you haven't seen it already, there is part one. That's a jungle terrain setup uh, where I show you from start to finish how to achieve the same uh, results for your own games of 40k. This one's a bit of a change. It's like an urban combat scene here. So all the details on the board that you see from the stones and the scatter, uh, the barricades, uh, boxes, containers, and then obviously this main feature here with the Nakmund terrain. Uh, we'll run through that as well. So. Uh, stay tuned and we'll go through each of the details and show you exactly how to achieve the setup that you see here on the screen. So for the channel, I've uh, going down the route of more terrain and I think that's a major feature on the channel. So I'm trying to expand the terrain that we have and just to create some new interesting and fun places to fight across for our games of 40k. So first step for this terrain setup is the battle mat that acts as your foundation uh, where you can place your terrain on top. So this battle mat, and it's one of my favourites, it's from GameMat.eu, uh, Fallout Zone this one is called. This particular one that we have here, because we can use it for Apocalypse and so on, we've got the 6x4 size, but GameMat.eu have done a, a whole variety of sizes for their battle mats, so you can choose the size that you want. For our games of 40k uh, that we play currently at 2000 points, I just mark a boundary here, use these Games Workshop pipes just to mark the, the correct size of the board. Uh, for our games that we play. So you can do the same or you can choose uh, whatever size mat that you want and they also now do double sided mats as well so you can buy one mat and then you'll get a design printed on either side uh, just to get double uh, designs for your games of 40k. But the starting point is the battle mat. Rolls out nice and flat so you keep it rolled up, rolls out nice and flat across the board it's nice and soft so it's figure friendly if your models fall over, if you've got resin or metal models uh, it's particularly uh, good for those and then also nice and quiet for rolling dice as well and simply roll the mat out it's got all the design printed on it for you and access your foundation so what I'll do is I'll put uh, links in the video description below and in the comment section as well uh, it'll take you to the relevant uh, products that I'm talking about here in this video but for battle mat I'll put a link for that in the video description below and you can check them out it's gamemat.eu so do, I do like the colour of this one, it's not a standard grey, there's all sorts of colours going on, a lot of browns, a lot of rusty sort of colours, also some grey areas as well. So a terrain that you paint up in grey that you can use in urban, regular sort of grey setups, you can also use across on this one here. Uh, you notice I've started to bring in some brown uh, effect here on this terrain which will run through this uh, as a walkthrough tutorial how to paint uh, the Nakmon terrain as well. But the next... Uh, feature here will be at the industrial terrain set so that's from gamemat.eu as well so that's that building across there which I've modified I've put some walkways on top just so the miniatures can balance on top there but it's that building there it's these uh, green boxes those buildings it's the industrial terrain set from gamemat.eu uh, it's those larger containers across there as well there's another building just there, and that's actually, just for the size of this ball, that's only actually half the collection. You get another one of those in the set, uh, and you also get uh, large pipes as well. And I, I think in the set you actually get two more of those also. So it is a large set from gamemat.eu. Uh, it's the industrial uh, terrain set available from them. So again, it's pre-painted. I'll put a link for that in the video description below. The terrain that I've, my set that I have, I, I have revamped and painted it to match in with my Adeptus Mechanicus terrain. So there has been some weathering and some extra colours being added to these. 
I've actually created a tutorial showing you how to do that. So if you do get a hold of this terrain set, uh, then there is a full paint tutorial for this set here. So showing you how to add all the, the effects, the colors, uh, the weathering, uh, chipping techniques, and so on. Uh, that is on YouTube already. And also another feature you can see on these is these Imperial posters. I've already done a video on that as well. So there's a tutorial for that also. Uh, so for those two videos, the tutorial for uh, revamping and painting these and also the tutorial regarding the posters I'll put links for them in the video description as well so if you want to go down that route uh, you can follow those tutorials to see exactly how it's done so that's entirely your choice the, the way it comes painted is sort of this color here the pre-painted color scheme which matches in with this terrain anyway so it is optional you don't have to do the extra work uh, but I've just created some sort of nice admet colors uh, for uh, the industrial terrain set uh, just to add some extra details and the posters are a great job easily done and the tutorial for that will show you uh, how to achieve those results as well so so far we've got our battle mat sorted out nice and straightforward and easy uh, the industrial terrain set because what you can do is you can take a games workshop set that they've produced and then you can combine it with uh, another set of terrain in this case the game mat.eu set and as you can see from the board it's pretty much all you'll need uh, to fill the table out quite nicely. There are some other accessories on here, Munitorum Armoured Containers, uh, there is a painting tutorial for them on the channel as well, so that's already in position for you, so if you get a hold of those, I, I, these are excellent for battlefields, you can stack them up, uh, you can use them for line of sight blocking places to hide for infantry, they're not as big as a building, so they fit nicely in the middle of different places, so I'm a massive fan of the Munitorum Armoured Containers, and so you can check out the tutorial for painting those that's on the channel as well. So there's a lot going on on this battlefield. It's a, you know, a lot of interest here, a lot of different things going on, but there are tutorials in place to guide you through uh, each of these features. If you want to replicate what you see here, uh, then those just tutorials will show you exactly how to do it. So then, I'd, so we're going to leave this to, I'm going to run through this uh, just as a walkthrough tutorial. So just covering the other accessories first of all. So you'll see uh, some of the battlefield accessories from Games Workshop. Quite straightforward. Uh, and there are some of the accessories here from Games Workshop. Just there. There are these fences that I've made. I haven't done a tutorial on those yet. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about them. Uh, but they're sort of homemade ones that are put together. The same process for building those uh, as I did the platform uh, on top of the building across there. But that's a, a forthcoming tutorial all being well how to build your own chain link fences. Uh, Games Workshop, these accessories across here. There's a few other bits as well. It's an Admech piece from Games Workshop. And there's another one across there. All these little personalised little details. Uh, there's my dead Blood Angels Terminator. That's actually from the Toxicrine kit for the Tyranids. I put a rock under his foot instead of the, the dead Terminator and use that as a battlefield accessory. Just to add a little bit of a feature. This is the cat, which you'll see in most of our battle reports just moving around. That's from the Space Hulk set. And so too is the dead Terminator on the throne, wherever he is. He's somewhere on this battlefield. I've lost him. <laughs> he's around somewhere, but he's he's from uh, the Space Hulk set as well. But little features, little bits of personality that you can add to your battlefield, I think makes all the difference. Just makes it a great fun place and a very thematic place uh, to play your games of 40k. You can see there's some other uh, boxes here, Games Workshop set, again just added in. And the other thing is the pipes from Games Workshop, used to mark out boundaries. I've used a few of them across here as well. Uh, and the great thing is, is the pipe sets from Games Workshop, they match in with the sizes of the Nakmon set as well, so you can actually integrate them together. So that's everything on the board, except the Nakmon set. That's everything else that you see that we've, we've covered here. So uh, the battle mat, massive fan of this one. Not just plain, boring, predictable grey, but you've got a nice brown and rust colours going on here. Lots of detail on this one with the craters, the cracked roads, the rubble. There's grey areas across here, there's planks and so on. Piping, see how it all matches in nicely. It's an excellent battle mat uh, here for this setup. And then we've talked about uh, the industrial terrain set from gamemat.eu. It's a great set for filling out the table to complement another set. Uh, so there's that. 
then the Munitron armor containers, which are suited to any uh, battlefield, I use them all the time in our games. I'm a big fan of those. And then the posters, which add a lot of personality as well. Talked about that. And then there's the uh, terrain accessories uh, here from Games Workshop. The other feature that I like to add to my terrain is the stones and scatter. So you see the stones just here. It just blends everything in. You can see the stones just not too much, but just a scattering of them just to blend in the terrain to the mat. And the great thing is, you see the mat with the printed design of the stone and then some real stones on top. It really just merges the whole thing nicely and just adds that uh, nice finish. The other thing that you can do about these stones is I've got jungle colours that I talk about in the previous video where I spray them uh, the relevant colour. Uh, so these stones are not the natural colour they came in. These were sifted out from just regular sand uh, and then I sprayed them to match in with my terrain setups. So for the stones, if you wanted to copy exactly how I've done them here, I, I use these in lots of games. Uh, there is a brown sort of tint to them, so they'll match in with this battle mat as well. Uh, and also for sort of the grey urban setups that we do as well. So uh, for that, you simply take your stones, whatever colour they come out as naturally, it doesn't matter because you're going to spray it over the top of them. I put the stones in a tray and then I give them sort of 50-50 spray of this one. This is a standard colour that I use for my urban colour basing. It's Stealth and that is uh, by Montana Gold Sprays. You can get a hold of this uh, quite readily. It's a decent spray. The code for that is 7070. Any of the urban basing that you see for any of my armies, that sort of darker mid-grey colour, that's the spray that I use and then to match in with that I use it on the stones and scatter and as we'll talk about this terrain here uh, it's one of the foundation colours for this terrain also. So that colour there, that comes out quite dark, so what you can do once you've, you put them in the tray, spray over the top, shake them about, spray them again, get that darker grey on there, uh, and then you can give it a glint over the top, not completely respraying, but just sprays here and there just to bring in two tones. You can use the Army Painter Uniform Grey, it's called, uh, here, so you can get a hold of that. Uh, and use that as a mid-tone just to spray onto the stones to introduce an extra shade and colour. Then once that's done, there's two options you can go down. Uh, you can either stain them with inks or washes, uh, or you can use a brown spray, again just to glint uh, and introduce a bit of colour into them other than the grey, so just to bring them to life a little bit, introducing a bit of, br bit of brown. If you've got washes available, then great ones to use would be Seraphim Sepia, a bit of a rusty colour, or well, this darker tone here, Agrax Surfshade, you can perhaps mix the two together. Uh, but again, you can uh, put that over the top and mix them up. Uh, so there's that option. Again, you can use the tray, shake them up and so on, let them dry up. And that means you can have a universal colour of stones across the board and it'll match in with the terrain pieces you have and even matches in with the, the basing that I have for my models uh, for a lot of the armies on the channel. So that's one way to do it. The other option is to go for spray and just to put a glint of brown over the top so you can use uh, leather brown, just a little bit of this use. So if you've got stones all spread out on this tray here, just a few sprays across, uh, shake them up a bit, a couple of sprays across, it's just adding a little bit of brown but not too much, uh, just to add in an extra shade to those stones. And that's it done. It's very easily done. Uh, and each game that we play, clear the terrain down, put everything away, uh, and then just pull the corners of the mat in, collect the stones in the middle, and then put them into a bag and save them for next time. We just use these stones over and over and over again uh, for our games of 40k. We're a big fan of stones, not too many, not piling up too much, but a little bit of scatter here and there just to blend the whole thing in, just to add that extra layer of realism to your tabletop. So easily done, it's well worth doing. So then another little bit of detail in with the stones is uh, little bits from uh, vehicles and terrain uh, that you can add in. Again, it's so easily done and it just adds a little bit of extra realism. So for example, just pick out a few bits. Uh, here's a piece from, looks like her Razorback. Spray it silver. Uh, put the washes over the top, usually these two. Seraphim Sepia to rust it up. Agrax Surfshade just to tone it right down and then just uh, a dry brush of silver over the top and you could do a whole batch of these just uh, go through your bits box and spray up some stuff you see if a vehicle's destroyed it's on fire and so on usually it's just the metal that's left and it goes rusty very quick 
so you don't need to worry about the fine detail painting on things like this if it's old sheets of metal that's all you need to do and that's just a little train feature that you can add in I just keep that in with the stone so when I put the stones on the board it just comes out randomly these pieces just randomly landed as I've grabbed them out the bag uh, spare bits from terrain making is a steel beam here's a piece from a terrain set add a little bit of metallic to that just tuck that in there uh, you'll find is a piece a plate from some vehicle kit not sure just there then from the Nackmund terrain set comes with ruined bits as well so same painting process as this which I'll cover in a moment but I add, add those in as well and then just put the stones and scatter over the top you just get these little areas of interest just all adding to the realism it really helps uh, is a little tank track spare bit from a Lehman Rust kit the other great thing I love to add is uh, spare abandoned weapons here is a Tau pulse rifle no real effort involved spray it grey Put the washes over the top and that's it and once you have that done you want you to a little bit of effort once you have it done you'll be able to use that over and over and over again in your games of 40k and it just added, adds that little bit of extra realism it really is worth doing and it just helps the train because you've got your, 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 your uh, battle mat your terrain that goes on top but you're trying to blend and merge the two together to make it look like the terrain belongs on the mat and to do that is the stones and scatter just really helps to blend the whole thing in and to make it look as realistic as possible so that's the idea of this video is to give you as much detail as possible so that you can refer to this video and if you like the setup that you see here if you follow the tutorials along so I have linked out to a fair few others just because a lot of variety on this battlefield but if you follow all those tutorials uh, as I said here at the start of the video you can achieve the exact same results that you see here and there's no reason why you can't have this kind of setup for your own games of 40k and the skill level is, is not particularly high these are easy processes to follow uh, and so you can uh, get the results uh, that you see here if you like what you see I think this is a lovely terrain set up here very much looking I haven't played a game on this yet very much looking forward to fighting across this terrain plenty of features lots of areas of interest lots of different colors uh, as well and so step by step uh, you can achieve the same results so now the main feature uh, is this new Nakmon terrain set I think it's an amazing set the games workshop have created this sort of frontier outpost set uh, it's very versatile the walls come in sections there's corner pieces as well so as you turn corners or you can round a corner here put a, a string of them together as I've mentioned they connect up nicely with the uh, pipe set the Games Workshop have so that all just connects in that pipe just goes into the side there the buildings are stack also there's a main building here this one is separate so you can have that somewhere else this tower here just a brilliant brilliant set this is actually uh, one of those stacked on top of a larger piece of terrain uh, just there I built this so that the stairs are not fixed so they're actually loose and he just goes to the top of the stair like to look to you almost telling like a little story of what's gone on and there's another little compound uh, around there as well but endless combinations you can go for with these uh, so I'm a big fan out of this set it's a brilliant feature to have right in the middle of the battlefield so what we'll do is we'll do a walkthrough how to achieve the colour scheme that you've seen here it looks complex perhaps lots of detail but in fact the process is very very simple indeed so what I'm going to do here is a walkthrough tutorial so I'm not actually going to paint a piece here because this terrain set is finished uh, but it's so straightforward so I can just walk you through the exact process that you see here we'll zoom in so you can take a look at the detail here have a look up close at this wall section so there it is so there's a there's different tones going on here and uh, the, proce the process is very quick uh, so what you're looking at here is a mid grey there is a, a darker tone of grey being used here as well you can see around the feet around the base of this there is more brown being used and then there's some rust dotted about and there's a bit of silver being used as well on these spikes at the top so as you see in this wall section it's the exact same process for every part of this terrain at a feature so from the wall to the larger buildings it's the exact same process if I walk through this one I'll be able to apply the same process 
to all the other pieces of the Nakman terrain set. So this is how it's done. Uh, obviously build your uh, terrain first. Uh, so I don't spray on the sprue and so on, I just, just build the whole thing and get on with it. So the, the process I'm going to show you here, the idea is to save time. Uh, and I've neglected my terrain to a degree for a while, I haven't done new stuff for a good while and then I've found uh, it's a, a, a great interest in getting back into terrain mechanics, it's a major part of the channel uh, and it's enjoyable to keep changing the terrain around, having something different to fight across each time. Uh, and so what had been putting me off, and perhaps this is the issue for yourself, where you've struggled to get terrain done, and that's the time involved. You don't think, you look at a terrain set, you think that's huge, it could take me ages to paint. Perhaps you've had a go at trying to paint some terrain, you got you painted a small piece, and you thought, well, that's taking me hours to do that. And then it's been put on the back burner, because you've obviously got models to paint, and your armies to get done as a priority. So terrain often becomes a secondary uh, as issue, a secondary, project of importance and then gets left on the back burner and perhaps never done and you end up uh, never getting terrain sets finished. The idea of this is to show you a fast and quick technique. I would say that entire terrain set took me around about ye between 8 and 10 hours. Now that's for an entire terrain set. There is not much effort involved and so if you think you can over a week or two you can spare 8 to 10 hours then you can get an entire terrain set done. And once that terrain set's finished, you've got it. You can play multiple games. So as, as long as 40K goes on through the different editions, different codexes, different armies, the terrain set will just remain the same and you'll be able to use it for your games of 40K. So I think terrain is well worth investing in and you can have a fantastically painted army. But if you're using it on poor terrain, then it's, you know, it's like a picture without a frame <laughs> type thing. I, good terrain. Good army is the is the best combination. So I am a massive fan of terrain. I'm very happy to be getting back into the terrain. The idea is to do multiple terrain sets, brand new terrain sets for the channel. Uh, and so uh, the gateway to that for me and for yourself is fast and effective techniques where you can get great results, but without the time consuming aspect involved. So I would say to paint that, as you see here, is about 20 minutes. So you could do a few of these in an evening, come in from work or from school or college, whatever you're doing, take an hour and you can crack through a fair bit of this uh, and make good progress. So, uh, the first step, uh, and you're cheating really, using sprays. So you can use an airbrush if you wish, I don't have one, so I'm trying to use a uh, developer technique without an airbrush, but if you have an airbrush then that's fine. Uh, I'm just spraying straight from the can. Uh, so the first thing is to add in some shade, and it's it's noticeable, but it's not noticeable. It's sort of something that goes on in the background uh, that you may not see as such, but it's there. It's creating more depth to the detail. These, in fact, these are fantastically sculpted and designed by Games Workshop, and so you're just trying to amplify that. So the first spray that you use is back to the same spray that I use for basing, the same spray I use for the stones that we talked about, and then I use it on the terrain as well. So this is the Montana Gold uh, Stealth 7070 is uh, the code. Uh, if you can't get hold of it, then you're just looking for a mid-dark grey spray. I used to go to Halfords and use uh, Rover Tempest Grey. So if you've got a Halfords near you in the UK, then uh, that if they've got a spray paint section, then that's a very similar grey colour that you can use as well. I'm sure there'll be other companies that sell sort of a darker uh, shade of grey that you can use. But if you can get hold of it, it's Montana Gold Stealth. So with this spray, I'm not looking to spray the entire piece. Uh, so I would take a piece like this, I'd tilt it up and spray underneath. I'm trying to catch uh, the darker shading to get it into that darker grey colour. So all up under here, up underneath here, is all sprayed with that colour. So you, you can almost see there's this natural light and shade taking place here as well, but the darker shade of grey is up underneath here, underneath here and so on. Rotate it around uh, and then just spray underneath here as well. So when it's finished, it'll be half sprayed. You know, you won't have caught any of this stuff up on top. It doesn't matter. You're just looking to catch underneath. And you can spray from an angle, so you're catching the sides of the wall here, and so on. But you just, the, the priority is to get that shading from underneath done. So you work your way along through the terrain uh, for the buildings. It's the same, so tilt the building up. Uh, spray from sort of this angle just to catch all the undersides in that darker, darker grain. You can even see it here 
on the base where it's the darker grey has gone on there. So that's your first step, and that does your shading, that's it. So there's no uh, washes, having to paint the shading, dry brushing and so on, just spraying it, that's it, done. Very easy. Then you move on to your mid-tone, which again I'll use a spray for that, so it's the Army uh, Painter Uniform Grey. And remember I was talking about the little stones and accessories, you're spraying them up to match this exactly, so your stones will fit in, which they should, they should match this because it's meant to be rubble that's fallen off buildings like this. So you want them to match in the same. So uh, for that you're using uh, the Uniform Grey from Army Painter. And for that one, uh, you certainly don't want to spray underneath. You don't really want to spray directly ahead either, uh, but you want to come in from an angle like so, because you don't want to interrupt the shading that's already been done for you with the darker grey. So I would spray sort of at that kind of angle coming in uh, and then just spray around. So obviously you can uh, stand this up on your tray or whatever you're doing and then spray around and down. You're coming down at an angle. And what it will do is it will catch all these areas for you, uh, but it will leave the shading underneath. And the same on the building as well. So the mid grey catching all these top areas but underneath there is the dark grey. Uh, it's then a four highlights, it's called. Uh, that means you're going to get your shading and mid-tones done within seconds. You know, you, to spray that, um, if you're doing a batch, if you're doing the train, all the train at the same time, which I'd recommend that you do, uh, then by the time you get one train piece sprayed and moved around, by the time you circle around back to the beginning again, uh, that will be dry, so you can immediately get onto the mid-tone and get them sprayed up as well. So just spray the whole train piece in one big batch, get all the tr uh, spraying done uh, very, very quickly. It'll take you about half an hour to do all the sprays across the whole train setup. So once that is done, the next colour is, because you've got grey, it's always good to try and introduce other colours if you can. And so what you can see on, on this train piece here and on the wall is the there's brown running across here. Again, very easily done. Usually I would have said, oh, I need to dust this, I need to dry brush this effect on, but I thought, no, let's try and save some time. And again, we're gonna use a spray can. Because if you look at any buildings in, in the real world, uh, often you'll find uh, that dirt and grime collects at the base of a building. Just with the rain coming down and it flicks up dirt onto the base, it's near the ground, it's near the damp, and so this, these areas often get dirty. The other great thing about doing this is that it means that the grey isn't in so much contrast if you use this train piece on something other than urban grey uh, battle mats. So for example the battle mat that we uh, have set this train up on here, uh, spraying this base with a bit of brown helps to, helps to blend the whole thing in. So you've got brown on the base and then brown on the terrain piece as well. If I happen to use this on an urban grey terrain setup, the brown won't matter because it's realistic, it's what you'd expect at the base of the building. So you're actually opening up a bit more flexibility of this and it's realistic to do it as well. And you're introducing a couple of tones and shades, which I think is so easily done and just very effective. So if you put this in your tray, standing up, there's two, there's two ways you can go about doing it. You can spray directly, so you just spray along. This is the uh, leather brown from Army Painter is the colour I'm using. There's two shades here which I'll talk about. One's optional and then this is the main one you want to use. So it's leather brown from Army Painter. So you can uh, hold the train piece and then just spray directly and catch across here. Well, there's another way of doing it. That's where you can place the uh, train piece on your tray, spray tray, whatever, you, or, or however you're spraying it. And then you spray uh, across the tray here and then it will flick and catch at uh, the base of the train at the same time. So you're actually not aiming for the terrain, because you want to overspray onto it. So you actually aim for the, the base of the tray that you're spraying on, and then it will naturally flick across uh, and dust across there, uh, achieving that technique. So there's either way you can do it, uh, but I've actually found that spraying just at the base of the train there, uh, it goes on, just gives it a nice misting at the bottom. Not too strong, not solid color, just that uh, you're dusting it, just watching very carefully that you're not doing too much or too little. If you, do too, if you do too much, I've done it a couple of times, if you overspray and it's too strong, there's too much brown going on, then just go back to uniform grey and then just correct the problem. The sprays dry nice and quick uh, so you can move on very, very quickly. And again, just flicking around the base, 
move on. Take the larger train piece, spray around the base, rotate around, spray around the base, uh, and you can get that done very, very quickly indeed. And it's all that brush work, no brush work involved, just sprays, it takes a matter of seconds. Now what you can also see here is a little bit of another color coming in. This is optional. If you want to brighten it and add in, just flick on a little bit more detail, then you're welcome to do that. The color for that one, again, it's Army Painter. I'll put a link for these in the video description below uh, or a description of them so you can go and find them uh, on different websites. Uh, so, uh, Color Primer Desert Yellow, this one is called. That's the color just there. If you are going to use this one, it's very, very light dusty. Obviously, you can do as much as little as you want, but this is just a, a little bit just to introduce another shade. And with sprays, some people say, well, with sprays, it's not a very fine, it's not as fine as an airbrush. But for terrain, that little bit of a rough flick of uh, the terrain and the spray is actually kind of what you're looking for anyway, because of the, the roughness of the terrain and the, the dirt that's flicked up uh, onto the, the base of this building. So, you know, you can actually see the flicks of it at times, but that's fine. It's sort of what you're looking for anyway. So you can add that on. Sometimes it flicks across here, but that all helps to break the terrain up to help it look a little bit more realistic. So I don't have a problem with that. And again, if you, do, if you have made a mistake, just respray of uniform gray and start again and adjust accordingly. But that process I've just talked about is exceptionally quick. Uh, it, just, it just covers all that ground for you. Uh, very very fast and really at that stage you, it's almost I you could get away with using that on the board if you want you could stop at that stage if you wish uh, what we'll do is talk about the next stage we start adding detail even more realism uh, to your terrain so the next stage and again I, I sat and thought about this I thought I'd, I don't want to spend ages loads and loads of brushwork I, I just don't have the time to do loads and loads of brushwork I don't want to get bogged down with this train set. I want to get this train set executed, done, and onto the tabletop, but at the same time, I want it looking uh, as good as possible. So, vast majority of the hard work's been done with the sprays. It's going to save you absolutely tons and tons of time uh, and just make the process so much easier. But I would encourage you to add some detail uh, onto this with the brush uh, if you can. So, the easy part was to take, uh, there's a few colours involved. I was going to talk about metallics, but I think I'll talk about something else first. So, administratum grey. This is your light grey colour. You simply take a dry brush, something like this. This is a large dry brush from Games Workshop. You can go for something even bigger if you want. This one's handy for just getting into the pot. I'd take it on the brush, scrub it out, and just a usual dry brush process. I would just I'd flick that across I'd all the terrain here. And now you're catching all your hard edges. And it's literally that quick. You go around. And what you're doing is just catching all your hard edges and just introducing uh, a lighter gray. That will sharpen up and intensify the detail that's already been sculpted for you on this terrain set. Same process. I'd heartily recommend that you do the same process around here. It just lifts you out of the mid gray and it just, just, just really emphasizes the shading and just gives you all the hard edges as well. Just to make sure you get that all done. That's uh, administratum grey, straight from the pot, dry brush technique. And again, it's nice and fast, and it shouldn't take you very long. Skill level involved is not much at all. So then next stage after that, there's so much detail here, you could be tempted to say, right, I'm going to paint all these panels here, I'm going to paint the lights, I'm going to paint this, and then the more you do, the more time it's going to take. So you can do as much or as little as you want. I just wanted to do enough for effect but not to get bogged down uh, with the train set. The last thing I want to do is half paint it, get discouraged because it's taking too long and then leave it the project abandoned. I wanted to hit the project, get it done and then be happy with the result uh, and save time. So for your metals, quite straightforward, just take Iron Breaker. The, the silver colour will go onto the grey, no problem at all. So for this particular piece, I just wanted to do the spikes, uh, the silver colour. Now. One option is to paint each of the, use a smaller brush, but you paint each of the spikes. It'll take you forever. So all I did was take a, a, a smaller brush than this one, uh, but I just flicked across the top with the silver. And then flicked across there as well. And the way the bristles moved is they pretty much caught in between at the same time. So <laughs> it's just, it just literally saved you half an hour instead of going around each one, each, each one individually. 
because there's a little bit, you've got to be a little bit loose with painting terrain. You don't want to spend ages and ages painting. It's not like a model where you're getting all your details right because, you know, that's your, your pride and joy of the army you're putting together. With terrain, you've got to be a little bit more easy going with it. It's effect more than anything else is what you're going for. So that's nice and quick. Uh, taking a bit more of a control brush, a smaller brush. Again, I don't want to paint loads and loads, so I pick out a few areas. These areas here, I paint them in metallic, so just fill them in. Like so, around here. Didn't want to get too involved with all of this electrical panels and so on, I end up getting stuck on that. But the steel door with the rivets and the surrounding frame, paint that. That little electric control panel, pick that out in silver. Very easy, there and there as well. You know, you could pick out this exhaust cover here, there's wiring you could pick out, the lights, but as soon as you start going down that route, it's going to start absorbing time. So I just pick out a few areas, just to show you've added in some detail. Uh, that's what you have. So by this stage, what you have is your uh, terrain piece uh, with the sprays, the dark tones, the mid tones, uh, the weathering effect around the base. You flicked your highlight across as well, just to really emphasize all the colors and the shades of the grey which has really helped and then now you've picked out your silver, your metallic areas. So next stage is we'll get the silver finished. So with that it's two shades. As first is Agrax Earth Shade. That's going to darken it right down. So that wash just goes across all the areas of silver that you've painted. So here, here, all around here. It's the whole door frame. Uh, just do that across the project. And then once that's entirely dry, uh, I would then re-highlight with uh, the Iron Breaker uh, Sistil paint just to tidy it up. Not too strict, just to uh, scrub it a little bit, tidy it up, just to strengthen it. And that's it. We'll come. There's a there's a final rusty effect to do, but that's when the whole terrain piece is done. So that's that at that stage. And then you can. It's optional. You can introduce another metallic colour. So you can see this brassy bronze colour which I've used for all my Admec terrain and so on so I thought I'd use it again so any, I, I've done it where, it where there's any Adeptus Mechanicus type plaques and plates with writing I've done that colour so it just adds another so you've got your plain grey you introduce a bit of metal looks great and introduce another colour and effect it just lifts the whole thing it just shows you've taken a bit of time to add some detail but not burnt out doing so much work just it's easily done so that color uh, is nice and straightforward so that's that hush up to copper paint that on again it'll go onto the gray nicely for you then uh, same process you can give it a wash of agrax earth shade uh, you can give it a second wash if you want to so from sepia once that's entirely dry your finishing highlight just to really make the whole thing pop is hash up copper and you mix it about 50 50 with the storm host silver that nice light the old mithril silver color nice light silver mix that together and then just brush that across the top it flick nicely across there and it'll just lift the whole thing for you give you a nice sort of glinting bronze color uh, to use so again nice and straightforward Alright, so once that's all done, there's a few details being picked out. I did want to add posters to this, but it's the terrain's just not really poster friendly. There's no real sort of flat areas for posters. I could put a couple up there perhaps. Uh, but I've ended up not putting any, any on this particular terrain. So I might I could add some in the future, it's always something you can add later. Oh. So there's a few other bits just on this particular terrain set. Uh, you can see my uh, Add make plate across there just to show you on another terrain piece. See it on there? That's the same process. Tucked a little bit in there as well. I'm not doing too much. I'm trying to resist. I could paint all this bit silver and this bit and this bit, but you just keep going and going and going and then little is more, or less is more sometimes for effect. Uh, I thought these electric cables at the back, I didn't want them in grey, so I just painted over those uh, with a contrast black templar which a lot of people have got now, it's very commonly used. So you can add that over the top. It sort of highlights and shades for you at the same time. Just painted that over the top, no further work required. Just those black cables, got them blackened out. Uh, the silver you see here is the same process as we've already talked about, exactly the same. And then the glowing blue here, if you want to copy me on that one, then I fill it out with this color, Araman Blue. 
and then once that's dry I mix with Aram and, uh, Aram and Blue with white, so I've got Scar White here, about 50-50, water it down a fair bit and I can show you, you water it down a fair bit uh, and then just paint it in and it's, it's the opposite to a shade so you, the, the lighter version is going in where the shade would go and it's to create that glowing kind of effect so I just fill that in and that just creates that glowing effect just there effort required to do that hardly anything you're just introducing a fresh colour and it's, it's where it should be you'd expect something like that to be going on uh, skill level zero it's not much skill required to that at all just mixing paint watering it down and that's it but that just adds that nice effect well, that just little touches uh, can go a long way. So that's those few little details, it's worth doing because it's a nice little feature, you see it sticks out on the uh, the paint job just there. So, for the last stage, we've covered all of that, the last stage, it's optional, I would encourage you to do it, and that's just a rusty wash uh, where you're going to pick out the cracks and the details. Uh, so, if I zoom back into this one, just here, so uh, it's you're basically taking a, a finer detail brush. So this, in this case, it's uh, actually a base uh, brush here from Citadel, uh, but that's the kind of size that I use. So not too fine detail, uh, but not too big. You're going to be clumsy with the, the brush strokes on it. Uh, you want sort of a medium-sized brush where you can load up enough of the wash as well. And you're just taking the serif from Sepia, and you're just picking out uh, around the rivets along the creases and the cracks. Uh, the whole unit's like this light piece just here. I just flood the whole thing and put and shade it like so. Uh, the vision slits and so on. So there's different options that you can go for. You can go for covering all the cracks and rivets and going around it. That's obviously gonna take you a bit of time. Uh, or you can just do a few bits here and there just for a bit of effect. I've sort of gone uh, covering most of it but not too strict. So filling out all of these creases some of the rivets but skipping a few some of the rivets here but skipping a few making sure i do all the lights though uh, around the base not worried so much about it because the brown's already down there and then instead of shading the whole metallic spike i just do the base of it where it meets the gray and just go around like so and you can use your finger to adjust if you do a bit too much uh, now that will take you, it does, it's, it's the most time consuming part, but it just gives you that, that nice finish, a nice realistic finish, and I think it's worth doing. So you can see there's some areas, I've, I've left a few rivets, I haven't done them. I haven't done each individual rivet on here, no point in doing that. I've left a few areas, and so on. So I would be selective in what you do, uh, don't get bogged down in, in being too finely detailed with it. Uh, and again, it's a medium sized brush, you're not too strict on what you're doing, just going around like that loading up the brush, uh, picking out a few rivets, going around there, filling that in and just moving sort of that kind of pace around. So it will take a while, it takes longer on the buildings, uh, but it's worth doing things like this tower. Uh, I sort of flood all the cracks here in between and just wipe off any excess. Didn't get all those rivets, doesn't really matter. Uh, in and around here. If there's any kind of electric type panels, I'll make sure I get all those filled in nicely with it as well. Uh, on the metal, I would add in some of the rust as well. So on here, for example, I don't coat the whole thing, but I'd flood some of the rust into all the cracks and shade it the same way I would the gray. Again, just add a bit of rust and realism to that. That we've covered, that's already finished. This light unit here, I just flood rust over the whole thing. The seraphim sepia, just to shade it out. And that finishes it off like so. And that's the kind of effect that you'll get. So that's pretty much it. I think you just, for that kind of effort, as I said, about eight, eight to ten hours solid work to get the whole terrain set done. Now for a terrain set that's going to half fill your table, and for the, the level of details on this thing, I think that's pretty good. So if you're willing to put in the time, and you could do sort of an hour at times, it's amazing what you can get done in an hour. Uh, and I would encourage you to hit the project and just keep at it and get it done within a few days. Don't let it drag out, because terrain can be overwhelming, it's a larger project uh, and you don't want to 
shelve it and leave it to the side and it starts collecting dust and never gets done. So really try and hit it within a few days to get it completely finished. The final stage, just to try and protect it, to, to uh, seal it all together and to make it nice and durable, just a coat of varnish. So I'm still a big fan of the Munitron varnish from Games Workshop, so you can get a hold of that. And uh, just give it a light spray all the way around, just to tone it all in. It helps the metallics nicely, they keep their shine, and just get a very soft sort of satin finish, nice rich kind of color. You just keep that sheen on the metallics here as well, so it's an excellent uh, spray to use. Use uh, Goblin Gaming, uh, they do Games Workshop stuff, they'll be able to do this terrain set. Uh, some of the sprays as well, the paints, so you can check them out for discount 40k. It's usually about 20% off the usual price uh, from Games Workshop. Link for them in the video description below. So that's the terrain setup. Uh, we've covered everything now, so we've gone through in detail how to assemble, paint, and finish off the Nackmund terrain set. It is a mightily impressive set from Games Workshop. Uh, it's not quite enough to fill out a table, so what we've done is we've added uh, other accessories and a terrain set from GameMat.eu uh, as well. But all the links uh, for everything there and list of materials to use will be in the uh, video description, also in, in the comments section as well. If you're a channel member and you get into the terrain and make progress, uh, then do share your pictures over on Discord. Let us know if you need any help or any comments, leave that in the comments section below. And hopefully this video has been a guide and aid to you and an inspiration as well as you seek to put your own terrain together for your games of 40k. I think what I'll do in this video is I'll put a bit of music on and I'll uh, pan around the board uh, just to give you an idea of the different areas of detail that's on this table. But that's the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep a lookout for more videos in this series, and I'll leave you with some close up views uh, of this terrain setup. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time.